So a question that I had and I've been seeing asked is whether React Hooks hurts performance because we're gonna be creating a lot of functions, especially in the render. Um, and they answer this quite well in the React docs. And the answer is no, it does not hurt performance. Um, so specifically the case I just mentioned, it doesn't really matter that we're including or creating a lot of functions. And then there's really another concern to performance in the React, the number of times things are rendered. So we can deal with that with things like peer components and implementing should component update. And so React hooks pose a problem because we're now going to be creating all these functions in the render function. And so they're going to be creating new refs every time. How can we prevent this from happening? How can we prevent our components from re-rendering every time? So they give us three techniques that we can use and that we're going to be exploring in this video. So the three that we can use are use callback, use memo, or use reducer to prevent this. So we're gonna take a look at example and see if we can reduce the number of times that it's rendering. So we're gonna take a look at the to-do list that I created in a previous video. So I'm logging every time the input field is rendered. So I have one, two, and we can see it's rendered a couple times, but the thing is, what happens when I click to complete an item? You'll notice it's re-rendering the input field every time, which is not really necessary because nothing changes here. So that's what we're going to try to prevent is that happening every single time. So here is what the code looks like. We'll see if we can fix this. So let's take a, let's take a look at why is it re-rendering the form component every time we hit that or click that. Well, here is what the code looks like. When we click it, we call toggle complete. Toggle complete up here calls set to do's and it re-renders this function or this component and then it's going to re-render the form. And you'll notice we're passing in a new on submit every time. So usually if we wanted to prevent the number of times this guy is uh, rendered, we can use a peer component, uh, but this is not a class. But luckily React added a new function called react.memo. We can wrap this in it. And now this will work the same way as peer components. Uh, now we can also pass in a custom function as the second prop down here if we wanted to and we can then pass the logic to whether something should re-render or not. But in this case, I'm going to use the default one that comes with memo. Now out of the box, this does not help us because it doesn't know um, that this is the same function because we're creating it every single time. So let's bring it up here. So I'm going to say const on submit and I'm just going to copy this. And we're gonna pass it in. So every time this whole component here is rendered, it's creating a new on submit because this Lambda right here is being created. Um, and so it doesn't really help us that we added the memo quite yet. So I click on this um, and it's being re-rendered. So the way we can prevent it from rendering every time is if we can Ch change, so not have this change, basically. So this on submit here needs to be the same on submit it was on the previous render um, for it to stay or for it not to re-render this form. So, well, you can try this with use callback. So we can say use callback, and we're going to import that from React. And we're gonna find it does not work quite well. And the reason for that is how use callback works is here's the function that we wanna call. So we'll just keep it like we have it. And the second parameter is when should it uh, re recreate the function. And while we're using the to do's here, um, so whenever to do's changes, we need to kind of recreate this function because we depend on it. So what we can do is we can pass array as a second parameter and we can say to do's. So now we're gonna create the on submit, or this use callback is going to memorize this. And so every time to do's changes, it's gonna pass us, it's gonna recreate the function. Otherwise, it's gonna return what it had before. So now if we come back over here and we take a look at this, we can say one, two, and it's still gonna be not working. And the reason for that is we are updating the to do's every time we complete it. So this method is not gonna work for us. And same thing if we change this to use memo. So basically the key to getting this to work 
is to be using use reducer. So what we can do is we can change what's happening. So instead of having our on submit here, we can say use reducer. And this is another hook from React and we can say our to do's reducer. And then this is our initial state, which is an array. And then we're gonna get our to do's and our dispatch here. So now we can just pass this dispatch function to our form. So I'm gonna say dispatch, dispatch. So the dispatch function never changes, so form won't get re-rendered because the reference stays the same. Now we didn't actually implement to do's reducer yet, but pretty much what it is is we're just going to create a reducer like Redux and then we can implement all the actions. So I went ahead and already did that. So I'm just gonna delete this file and I called it app2 over here. And so I can rename it. Um, and then our app, I'll show you what that looks like. So here are my reducers. I created three of them. This is how we add a to-do. This is how we toggle a to-do off and this is how we reset. So for the add, same logic as before. Um, and But now we're gonna be taking the action, the text and inside the action and we're gonna say complete is false. That's the default state is what we want when we create a new to-do, and then we just keep the rest of the initial to-dos. Then after that, to toggle complete, we're doing the same logic as before, mapping through, looking for the position we want to toggle. In this case, we're passing it through an action again, um, and then we're actually changing it. And then reset just returns an empty array. And then below, this is what it looks like. Uh, we're using use reducer. This part didn't change and then our dispatch on click looks like this. So we say the type is toggle complete, pass in the I. Our dispatch here for resetting, we say type reset. And then our form over here, instead of using on submit, we can say dispatch. And the on submit here, we're gonna change to dispatch. The text is going to be um, text.value and then the type is going to be add to do. So if we save that, and come back over here, we can now create one, two, and then now when I cross this out, it's not gonna re-render every time. So that is how we can use use reducer to prevent renders. In this case, we get the same functionality as I were to, if I wanted to build this out with a class component, and then I could create a pure component, uh, but this is how you would do it with just functions. Uh, it's kind of interesting though, is we now created basically our mini Redux right here in our reducer for it. So in this case, I believe we had to create this reducer, but I'd love to know if you guys know of another way to build this um, and to prevent form from re-rendering with using functions and not using use reducer. I'd love to know about it.